Please welcome Safra Katz. Welcome, welcome to Tuesday of Oracle Open World. We are gonna have a great day. And we're gonna start with Accenture's keynote. Accenture and Oracle have partnered together for three decades to help enterprises drive innovation and business outcomes enabled by Oracle technology. Together, we help clients achieve the benefits of moving from on-prem to the cloud with us here at Oracle. And in that journey, we share thousands of customers and we celebrate their success. At Open World this week, several of our joint clients, like Hearst, and the state of Texas will be showcasing how their programs are driving operational efficiencies while innovating, something Accenture does exceptionally well. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Annette Rippert, Senior Managing Director at Accenture. Annette is responsible for, Accenture, for Accenture's technology business in North America. And it's Annette that's accountable for defining the technology growth and innovation strategy, shaping the new key offerings, and leading Accenture's growing team of technology specialists. Please give a warm welcome to my friend, Annette Rippert. I am so honored to be here. It's so wonderful to see everybody up early on day two. You know, today, to start our discussion, I have one important question for you. That question is, why are you here? Are you here to learn? Are you here to hear about all the exciting new technologies that Oracle is bringing into the market? Are you here to plan a course of how you'll implement those technologies in your organization. What I think is a key thing, as you think about all of the reasons that you're here, is to think a bit about why. Now, I'm a technologist, and I am an engineer by training. In fact, not only am I an engineer, I started my career as an Oracle DBA, so it might be fitting that I'm back here. Now, as I think about that, this was one of the first big tech conferences I ever attended. And so I think about what did I learn? What was my why as I attended that conference? So when I think about why I'm here now, I am definitely here for the technology. But I'm a business runner, and I'm a realist. And so it leads me to ask you again that single most important question, which is why? So we're all living in an unprecedented time of business disruption. And in that business disruption, we need clarity about what we want out of our technology and our business investments. And that is why asking why is so important while you're here. So, if disruption is becoming such a persistent way of life, it's important to understand how that impacts your business. And we've done some extensive research to unravel insights about the disruptive forces that are taking place in business. So, if we think about that, what we uncovered in that is that a vast majority of businesses are being impacted by this disruption. In fact, 71% of the 10,000 companies we analyzed, their industry or they are going through some sort of significant disruption. So in order to survive in this environment, 
it's very clear that incremental change is not a direction that will allow you to overcome that disruption. In fact, what's required is a breakthrough. <clears throat> so, I'd like to share just a brief story about a company that was facing disruption. This company was well established in their industry, in fact, seen as a leader. They were privately held until 2001 when they went public, and by 2014, their stock had grown over 400%. That would have been a good one to hold. Uh, their revenues had tripled. But suddenly, amidst all this success, and sometimes it's hard to look past success, it became very clear that this company was being squeezed competitively from all sides. On the one hand, they were facing competition from <clears throat> uh, commoditization and very aggressive competition. On the other side, there were new entrants in cloud. Software giants were moving into aspects of their core business. And the company's leaders realized they were in trouble. They needed to disrupt themselves before the market did it to them. Some of you may be in that situation today where you're looking for answers, thinking about, I can see that my company, my industry is changing, and I need to move quickly. So that company, they created a strategy to move into new innovative areas of business. They were moving into areas like cloud and digital and security. But we all know, as business people, that takes investment. So you can have a strategy, you can have a desire for a direction, but it requires investment. So what did they do? They supercharged their core business with automation. They drove out costs. They did everything they could to generate cash, which they used to invest in new products and services and a boatload of acquisitions. So, I think the other thing we have to think about is that as I watched this, this company experienced a people challenge like never before. The change management initiatives to get through this have impacted literally the entire organization. So, it became apparent that this was not a one-time disruption. This was, in fact, going to be an ongoing set of changes that requires a company to become nimble and think more effectively it required for them to think about how their people strategy would be critical to their success. If they made investments in these new businesses, how did they have people stay current on technology so they could be in the market? These were all challenges that they had to consider as part of their ongoing strategy. So, I share this story of this company because they exemplify something that we call the wise pivot. And in this situation, it worked. So, in only four years, that company doubled its market cap, and they grew their revenue by another 33%. So, it was a difficult journey for them, and not everyone agreed on what they tried to do. But they understood why and I think that that's why they were successful. So the wise pivot strategy works. And organizations that are looking to break through disruption have to think about how they're going to get there. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Okay. So the wise pivot, it enables breakthroughs in key three areas. If we think about innovation, investment, and people. These are the levers for each of you to think about how would you use these levers to control change, to control and set strategy within your own organization. So as we think about some of the things that you'll be experiencing this week or the stories that I'm about to tell, think about how do any one of those levers fit within my organization. Okay, first we're going to talk about the innovation pivot. So, this week, you're here to learn about technology breakthroughs. The key question is, how are you going to use those breakthroughs in your business? 
Will you use them to think about how you can launch new businesses, new services or products in your business? Will you use them to supercharge your R&D capabilities? Will you use them to facilitate faster V&A activities? There are many more reasons why. But each one of these aspects of innovation will help fuel change. If we think then about the investment pivot. So the investment pivot, I think, is key to be able to fuel the investment needed for the innovation. So if you think about this, I'm sure that many of you are thinking that your organization is focused around spending on just maintaining your current systems estate. I'm sure you're also thinking that you need to have a way to afford new innovations. So investment breakthroughs use innovation to flip the investment curve. So you can spend your capital instead on things that grow your business. And we'll talk about how that works. The last pivot, the last pivot is around people. And so as you think about this, I think one of the things that's most important is thinking about how are you positioning your company to enable world-class leaders to make world-class decisions? How are you helping to create an innovative culture in the kind of technologies you're deploying? Are you delighting your employees and focusing on that in the same way you focus on delighting your customers? In this day and age of the incredible war for talent, that's a key question. Are you using AI? to augment your workforce so you can be more productive. So these are all key changes, key aspects of the people pivot. OK. So these are all three aspects. If we think again about innovation, investment, and people. And they depend on each other, which you could understand a bit about how they're interdependent. So today, I want to share a few inspiring examples of companies that are enabling their breakthroughs with Oracle's technologies together with Accenture. Not only how they're doing this, but I want you to understand why they're doing this. So these companies are meeting disruption head on with clarity of purpose. So first, let's talk about the innovation pivot a bit more. I want you to think for a second about when seconds matter. When an emergency strikes, nothing is more important than having the right officers with the right skills in the right place to respond. We could all agree on that. Having access to information that allows you to get that right is essential. So one of the largest police forces in the UK West Midlands Police Department found itself facing this big challenge. Pulling together information that might seem simple about skills, people, their schedules, their capabilities. This was something that two years ago took them 11 hours. There is nothing in 11 hours that is effective in responding to an emergency. And this was because information was across all different kinds of systems, and they didn't have an effective way to pull them together. Does that sound like something that maybe is in your business? I think all of you could say there are instances that you have situations like this. Today, that data is available to them in just minutes. So why? Because they're using the Oracle Service Cloud portal to innovate and break through. Their solution's creating a better experience for the public, a better experience for all of their officers and the employees that try to get this right in the time of an emergency. Not only are they more effective in responding, they're also saving $37 million through the course of that program, which I think is pretty incredible. They're one of the first implementations of all three pillars of Oracle Cloud, ERP, HCM, and CX. And now, West Midlands Police can focus on their core business of preventing crime, protecting the public, and helping those in need. I think that's a pretty good example of applying innovation. 
If we think then a little bit about yesterday, you would have heard from Andy Mendelson about the autonomous keynote session, speaking about the huge potential related to the innovation that's taking place around Oracle's autonomous database. You would have heard examples of everything from supercharging research of chronic diseases to generating customer insights in one-tenth of the time that we used to. Again, remember, I'm an old Oracle DBA. I'm in awe of today's technology. But data is, in fact, the new battleground. The growth of data, I think you would all agree, has been extraordinary. So you have to think, what's the role of data within my organization? How am I using data to innovate in our business strategy? The volume of data is just becoming overwhelming. And you have to think about how do I use that data as a strategic asset in the business? How can your innovations be powered with data? OK, so if we think about that a little bit, I'd like you to take a minute and visualize with me. I would like for you to picture a spider web. <laughs> so you might think that's funny. I am the mom of five boys, so I've seen a lot of spider webs in my day and had an opportunity to look at them up close. So just go with the analogy for a minute. So if you take a look at a spider web, I think there's something that you would see if you took a very close examination of it. It's very complex. There are millions of intersections. And it's much more than it appears. So, if you could use that analogy to think about the complexity of data that's necessary to operate, let's say, a large-scale shipping and logistics company. Data is fundamental to the core of that business. Shipping, routing, tracking, changes, rerouting, you get the idea. So, your success as a shipper is all around how quickly you can move packages throughout your system and get them to the right place at the right time. So that's a huge task. And especially when you're managing two and a half million packages a week, like the Spanish express delivery company, Sayor. So Sayor is using the power of data to innovate. They're using the Oracle Autonomous Database and the Analytics Cloud to get ahead. Autonomous allows them to process huge amounts of data a day for their franchisees in near real time. So they're innovating now on top of that with apps that allow their organization and their customers to have complete visibility at any time into the overall logistics and supply chain. This is something they've never been able to do before, and it means that they have happier customers and fewer wasted journeys. So I ask you again to think this week about how you are using data to innovate within your organization. So I'd like to explore another dimension of innovation, where innovation provides the on-ramp to growth. Some companies are expanding through organic growth. Others are expanding through acquisition and investment in adjacent businesses. So maybe your company is growing this way. We're in a very acquisition-heavy environment. Every one of those acquisitions puts a tax on the organization. So our next company, in fact, amassed 360 businesses in over 150 countries. You may know them by their popular magazines, Good Housekeeping, Esquire, Car and Driver. And they, own, they have an ownership stake in radio, TV, cable networks, and all kinds of digital properties. If you think a little bit about this, as we think about uh, what they've done, that company is Hearst. Hearst has been focused on driving their business to a common ERP. They chose to focus on the enterprise cloud and you're going to hear more about Hearst this morning from Dave Hofstedius, who was charged with exactly this mission. And he'll share about how they got to that common enterprise cloud 
embracing change like Hearst has done for 130 years. Okay, so we've talked about West Midlands police, we've talked about Sayor and Hearst. These are three great examples of companies that are using Oracle technologies to make breakthroughs in innovation. Now, let's turn to the investment pivot. The investment pivot is all about freeing up capital to fuel innovation. But it's not easy to extract capital for innovation, is it? I know many of you have gone forward with an investment case, I'm sure, in your company. And that's a tough, that's a tough slog, trying to get the right funding for key projects you know will change the future of the organization. If you consider your own IT budget, much of what you spend today is probably still on maintaining old systems. In fact, in most companies, it's around 70%, with only 30% focused on new innovation. So what if you could change and flip that investment curve? What if you could instead direct 70% of all of your IT investments towards innovation. Born digital companies, that's what they do. They invest 100% nearly. So if you could flip that investment, that would be a major breakthrough. And that would fuel your innovation pivot. Next, if we think about this, we want to think about how companies are doing that. So let me tell you about an organization that manages nearly a trillion dollars in spending. That's a huge financial responsibility, a trillion dollars. Just consider that for a moment. So they set forth what might sound like an impossible goal for themselves. They wanted to dramatically reduce their costs, but they wanted to improve their system performance. And to me, that sounds a little bit like a mission impossible. But this was not for the state of Texas. So they chose to move their statewide ERP onto Oracle Cloud infrastructure. And with that, they moved 100 state agencies onto a single system of record. And this alone was an accomplishment itself. But what I think is more astonishing is that they cut their costs in half. In half. So, at the same time, yes, they improved their system performance, and now they're gaining more flexibility, more agility, because of the underlying capabilities to improve the operations of their agencies. And they'll be able to onboard and yet, in fact, even more onto the platform. So, for Texas, the driving factor may have been being a good steward of our taxpayer money, but in the end, imagine freeing up that kind of capital within your enterprise. So, if you're not thinking about this, you should be, and what you could do with that. So, I think something pretty important here is happening in the state of Texas is a bellwether for that. At least three other large state governments, Florida, Kansas, and Virginia, are also migrating their workloads onto the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. And if these big governments are making that move, surely there is something here for us to take note of. Okay, I'd like to move on then. As we think about this, we have talked about the innovation pivot. We talked about how the investment pivot can play a role. And now I'd like to talk about people. The people pivot may be, in fact, the most important pivot of all because no transformational change is successful without understanding why. To change a culture, people need to understand the fundamental reason of why. That's why, as I started out at the beginning, knowing why matters so much. So once we know why, then it's essential to have the talent that's going to deliver on that strategy. So now we talk a little bit about managing your most scarce resource, which in fact today I think most of you would agree are our people. So consider this. 
Is your organization attracting enough people? Are they retaining those people? Do they have the right talent? And I talked earlier about the need to continually change, reskill, keep your people current. When we're in this kind of dynamic environment around technology, that is a, a tall order. And I think perhaps the most important part is once you make those investments, how do you retain them in your organization and not lose them to a competitor? So, as we think a little bit about this, I think one of the most important things that we need to consider is whether or not we're really preparing for our people pivot. <clears throat> so, as we go forward, uh, we think a little bit about a case example that I'd like to walk you through. Can you imagine being an organization that makes a job offer every eight seconds? One that puts more than 800,000 people to work each year. Wow, 800,000 people. That is a company that has truly been a master of human capital. I would like you to meet True Blue, the industrial staffing company. Now, they specialize in reliable, on-demand labor in blue-collar industries, like construction, manufacturing, logistics. They operate in over 70 countries. If anybody's dealt with the labor laws and even one, that is a tough order. And they're doing this in a tight labor market, and they're doing it with a workforce that are digital native millennials. Very demanding. So, for True Blue, every time they have an interaction with their people, that interaction is critical. It's critical to retention. It's critical to the nature of their business. So, their goal was to have less friction and be more human. To do this, they tapped into the cloud they used mobility. They leveraged AI to make their business streamlined, accessible, and intelligent. So True Blue started using Oracle Cloud to streamline more than 20 different technology systems to make better plans around how they were managing headcount and budgeting. They created a simple and elegant front end for their staffers so that they'd be able to access their assignments, access important information like payroll information, all at the click of a bu button at any time on any device, because that's what a millennial demands. Okay, they also invested in AI. And they invested in AI so that they could match their candidates to the right kind of work and bring higher quality talent to their customers, because in essence, that is their business. So, you may not have 800,000 employees, but I think you would have similar needs. And if you think more about that human experience, what would that mean to your people to improve their experience? So, when you need to maximize your talent and think about how to grow your business, you can think about the story about True Blue. Okay. So, I'd like to turn to another company. And this company is, owns the world's longest and most complex crude oil and liquid transportation systems in the world. Given the nature of their business, physical infrastructure and management of their assets, it's critically important. So, what's so interesting is that as they set forth their strategic plan, it's what they put in the heart of their transformation journey. They put people in the heart of their transformation journey. This company is Enbridge. And they kicked off a three-year corporate program to refocus and reposition their business for future success. And if you look at that program online, you will see what I'm speaking about. Right at the core is their agenda around their people. So part of that strategy is bringing their businesses together on Oracle ERP Cloud. And in order to do this, 
they're working in a way that they want to create a more nimble culture within their organization. They said to themselves, and they asked us, how do I simplify the day-to-day -day work of the business? That's a question we all ask. They said to themselves, how can I avoid having to enter all this manual data into my system? That's a question we all ask ourselves. They asked us, how can I get more value out of analytics to make better decisions and empower my leaders to move more quickly? That is a question that all of us ask ourselves. So their goal was simple. It was simpler, faster processes and faster decision making. So my last example is a company that we have partnered with for three decades. That company is Oracle. Disruption, pivot, breakthrough. I think you would agree these are all words that apply to how Oracle has transformed themselves. Over the last several years, Oracle has pivoted in a big way to the cloud, and all of you are here. So I'm confident you have watched this from a front row seat. They had incredible clarity when they decided to go to the cloud. You saw it in every aspect of their business. If you were dealing with their sales organization, their engineering organization, there was never a doubt of why. Today, Oracle's cloud processes 72 billion transactions a day and is perhaps the clearest example of a leader who's dis breaking through disruption with clarity. So, clarity leads to faster breakthroughs. And we started this discussion about why. Do you have the clarity to make the next series of business pivots in your organization? There's a platform called My Concerto. It's purpose-built for the Oracle Cloud. I've seen it used to envision, innovate, develop, and deliver end-to-end -end solutions on Oracle technologies. It brings to life functions like finance and CX, talent, HR, supply chain, and looks at unique needs of each one of the different industries. My Concerto is helping organizations just like yours gain clarity, defining a business case, a roadmap, leading to better outcomes. And that's important because some of these business pivots, they're actually essential to the very survival of the organization. Okay, so do you remember at the very beginning of this discussion? I talked about a company that was facing disruption from all sides. Are you still wondering who that company is? That company, that company was my company. It was Accenture. And that was a very difficult time for us. And if your company is facing disruption like this, I am sure it is not easy for you either. If your company is facing this kind of disruption, you know that this challenge cannot be dealt with with incremental change. It requires bold change. It requires bold steps. And to set that bold agenda in motion, it requires clarity of what you want to achieve through your business and technology investments. So it reminds me of one of my favorite quotes from Winston Churchill. Bold captains are required for perilous seas. So as you experience all the breakthrough technology that you're going to see this week, I have just one question for you. How will you choose to be that bold captain? How will you choose to drive clarity and answer that single question? Why? Thank you.